So as of late, I've been really focused on writing and my thinking on, you know, remote learning. And now it's kind of shifting to, well, what's school going to look like? What does it need to look like? What does it need to feel like uh, when they welcome back students and staff and get parents comfortable? You know, so when you think about reentry planning, the reentry planning has to begin now. You know, as many schools are either well into or ending remote learning for the school year, the fall is going to quickly be upon us. And other countries are already either opened up or thinking about opening up. You know, when we look at a plan for success that's going to work for students, for families, for staff, safety and health are the most important. And, you know, as I wrote about this recently, I didn't really emphasize it enough. But we have to think about hygiene. We have to think about, you know, how we're going to be able to take temperatures effectively. We have to also think about social distancing. So as we think about this, first and foremost, any plan has to be grounded in the health and safety of students, staff, and our families. So let's go into some focus areas, knowing that health and safety are the overreaching element. Elements. I'm going to focus on eight, you know, uh, and they're not in any specific order. You know, we have to focus, you know, on social emotional learning of our kids. We can't even comprehend what this pandemic has done to our kids. You know, when we think about getting meals, not getting meals, not having Internet, not having families laid off. You know, we have to be prepared to meet the social and emotional needs of our kids. Number two, you know, if we think summer learning loss was a challenge. Uh, that's going to pale in comparison to addressing and closing learning gaps that have transpired. Some kids have prospered with remote learning. Others have suffered because of severe equity issues, which I'll address in a minute. Another area of focus is blended learning. You know, so many schools, districts have invested in a lot of technology so that remote learning can take place. That's great. And kind of people were, you know, figuring out as they went because there was no real Focus on pedagogically sound blended learning at scale. Now is the time to learn the lessons from this pandemic, from what we've done in remote learning, and really move forward with pedagogically sound blended learning. Number four, equity. You know, there's been a lot of inequity in terms of the assistance kids have gotten at home because of just, you know, where kids live, uh, parental support, but we've also seen challenges with digital equity. And, you know, now is the time to really focus on that going forward. We don't want to be ill prepared for the next challenge that will face us. So we have to focus in a more uniform fashion to provide all kids with great bandwidth and with access to devices. Number five, flexible and innovative schedules for social distancing. You know, this ties into the health and safety piece, but we can't predict what states will put in place for social distancing, but we have to be prepared, you know, whether it's going uh, year round schooling, alternating schedules, or, or just rethinking the school schedule. This is probably the best opportunity to address head on one of the things that holds education back, and that is traditional school calendar and schedule. Let's take these lessons learned. Let's focus on social distancing. Let's keep everyone safe, but let's create a flexible and innovative schedule that works better for more kids. Number six, budget. Budget cuts are coming. It is. I, I, I can't sugarcoat that. But we have to look at how money will put, be put aside primarily for the health and safety of our students and staff. We also have to look at budget in terms of you know, reducing the digital divide and leading into number seven, providing professional learning support for our teachers and our administrators. We cannot ignore this, everyone. You know, this cannot be either the first thing on the cutting block or something that we just take for granted. Teachers and administrators deserve professional learning on how to implement blended learning the right way, on how to sustain and maintain remote learning, on how to incorporate models such as uh, learning academies or smaller learning communities, a school within a school model, looking at uh, more innovative ways of asynchronous learning that works uh, in a, uh, with better timing for our teachers and our administrators. And then finally, number eight, community engagement. You know, I always say it all comes down to relationships. Without trust, there's no relationship. 
If there's no relationship, no real learning occurs. And we have to engage our families, our stakeholders, those who live in our community with the re-entry planning process because we want them to feel comfortable with it. We want them to feel that school is safe for their kids, for all of you. You know, so when we think about putting all these pieces together, when we think about a, remo- a re-entry plan, for all of this, and we think about these focus areas, it's all about consensus. It's all about gathering input, listening to our teachers, to our students, to our families, to our administrators, thinking about the challenges, but seizing on the opportunities that we have learned during this pandemic. Let's create a great plan.